It's true what they say in the human world, that rock and roll was born in hell. It's an infernal, demonic sex magic. The pinnacle of demon society is sacred art. There are many kinds of demons in hell. Some are those who barely resemble the primal state from which they came from millennia ago. Those demons who were originally devoid of empathy, who hunted humans. Sometimes it was through consumption, sometimes it was through war, and sometimes it was through sex. But now it's through rock and roll. It's the sacred art of hell, and demons are naturally attracted to the very primal emotion music stirs within them, born inside themselves from collecting mortal souls. The human world is caustic to humans. It's impossible to remain there for very long without the protection of hell. Those banished there will eventually become human, and stay that way, never to return to hell again. It was only after demons began acquiring emotions that they realized the long-term effects it had on them. Demons are not born with these emotions, and demons who have obtained large amounts of these human memories often develop a strange sense of human empathy. However, these memories grow stronger with each fairied soul locked away inside the hearts of demons struggling to escape. It is this very soul that allows demon It is this very soul that allows demons to master their demonic rock magics. When a demon has acquired enough memories, it begins to take a form of its own, its own consciousness. You could say that these memories act as instruments for a demon. It is through their instruments, symbols of the unity between a demon's memory and their soul, the demons have mastered rock. And the more of these memories they acquire, the more potent their magics become. Mm, Nadia? She's not in bed. Did she have to use that toilet thing? Nadia, are you here? Apologies, Miss Toko, but Miss Nadia's not here. May I get you something to drink? Toko spins around at the sound of that painfully cheery, irritatingly familiar voice behind her. In an instant, she's wide awake, suddenly overcome with dread and anger. Davy, Why are you here? Where's Nadia? What did Devin do with her? Tell me right now or I'll rip your ears from their seams. Oh, the youth these days as brash as ever. Oh, my ears. There's no need for vi- uh, Put me down. Lady Devon will not be satisfied with- Shut up and tell me. Oh, uh, okay, let me go. Hesperus Park. Lady Devon and Miss Nadia are waiting in the nearby Hesperus Park. Toko throws Davy to the ground as hard as she can, causing his stuffed body to rebound off the floor several times. Oh dear, I just saw all 1,955 lies flash before my eyes. Toko yanks Davy back up by the neck and vigorously shakes him. Take me to Nadia now! I have been instructed to lead you there. Let me go so I can- Not a chance. You take me to the park right now, and I will let you go the second Nadia is safe. Lady Devon will not be pleased when she hears how you've treated me. I don't care, you stupid stuffed bunny. Which direction do I go? Uh, you'll head south on- are you even listening to me? You're preventing me from carrying out my duties. If you get lost, it won't be my fault. I will tape your mouth shut if you don't keep quiet. Now tell me which way to go. If you tape my... Which way do I go? Uh, left at the next street. Nadia, please be safe. Alright, Davy, we're here. So where the hell is Nadia? Oh, here she is. Hello there, sissy. Glad you could take the time to come out here. Bask in the light of Devin, the percussive puppet master. The boast prompts a great chorus of stuffed bunny puppets all clapping with devoted rhythm. I know who you are. There's no point in announcing yourself that way. Hmm. It's been so long you've gotten so... human. What have you done with Nadia? A figure appears atop a slide in the park, silhouetted by the moonlight. The shadow sits on the slide and rides it to the bottom, landing only a few meters from Toko. Wait, that was her, like... <laughs> that was her entrance to, like, pose at the top of a slide and then just, like, ride down the slide? <laughs> just be like, aren't I a badass? Devin, Toko's irritating older sister. She's always followed by her equally annoying bunny butler, Davy. She has a penchant for dressing in those silly outfits and pretending to be cute. You'd think a demon as old as her would act her age. Nothing yet. I was going to harvest her soul. You know, that thing you were supposed to do years ago, but never got around to. Devin lifts a hand and gestures to Nadia, who's tied against the jungle gym with jump ropes. Nadia! Uh, Toko, I'm having a really weird dream right now. She's mine! You can't take her, so... Toko sprints toward Nadia, but a sudden strike to her lower back causes Toko to stagger forward and fall into the snow-dusted grass, wincing in pain. Oh, pardon me. 
Nope, 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 nope. Too late, little sissy, didn't you hear? Hell opened the contract on Nadia's soul now, since you're in exile. So she's fair game for any demon to take. Shouldn't you be glad I'm the one that's gonna have your precious little girly friend's soul? Better me than some random nerd, right? Nobody is gonna have Nadia's soul. Not you or anybody. And what exactly are you going to do about it? Not only have you never harvested the souls you were supposed to in order to become a big, strong, healthy demon, you're even turning into a pudgy, wimpy human before my very eyes. Oh, boo-hoo. I can still... I bet you can't even beat little Davy here. I bet he'd beat the snot out of you while balancing a cup of tea on his tiny little head. Come on, Davy. Show Toko how soft falling for a human has made her. I didn't fall for... Ow! Strike from Davy quiets Toko. The teacup he placed delicately on his round, fuzzy head stays perfectly still as he punches and strikes, preventing any counterattacks. Toko, when are you going to learn to keep focused? I shouldn't be able to get two hits on you in exactly the same way. Uh, shut up already! Once I'm done tearing this idiot apart at the seams, I'll take his stuffing and ram it down your stupid throat! Toko staggers to her feet once more, her vision blurring from kissing the dirt too many times today. She's getting really tired of being everybody's punching bag. She takes a step forward and starts walking toward Nadia again. Once again, an attack sidelines Toko. She falls to the ground, stunned by a powerful kick. The creak of an ancient, hellish bunny squeak reverberates through the park. Uh, my stuffing would not taste pleasant. I ask that you refrain from suggesting me as a meal. Ugh. You and your stupid pets. A cacophony of laughter and jeers rattle around the park. As Toko tries to get upright once more, Devon prepares for the fight. A dozen stuffed bunnies appear at her side, tying and affixing to one another, shaping themselves into a mass of bunny limbs. From many stuffed dolls, a single lagomorphic nightmare is formed. Ooh. From Devon's hand appears a set of elegantly carved black drumsticks. She lifts them into the air and clicks them together, and then begins to move and guide the colossal rabbit, much like a conductor. With a flick of the demon's wrist, the puppet prepares to turn Toko's body into a pasty, paw-print-shaped crater in the ground. A crush, obliterate, a fricassee! Aren't they wonderful? They're a bit dumber than Davy, but they're excellent at interior decoration. They do some lovely things with blood and entrails. Gross. You know, if I had to choose between having shitty family like you and getting stuck in a world like this, I would rather live here. Go back to hell, leave me and Nadia alone. <laughs> well, if you don't bury Nadia's soul in a few moments here, you'll be dead anyway. So it doesn't really bother me either way. Toko stands up again and limps over to Nadia, who's drifting back and forth between consciousness. Toko, what's going on? I'm sorry, Nadia, I'm sorry. I tried to tell you I was a demon and you didn't believe me. I really did come here to... to reap your soul and you were so nice to me. I just... I don't understand it. Now I'm gonna fail and Devon is gonna kill you because I met you. Silly Toko, I always knew you were a demon. You don't think I'm airheaded, do you? I remember the girl who found my ball. Every night I saw her in my dreams and I was hoping to one day meet her again. To know that there was more to it than just a memory. Nadia... If I'm gonna die, well, I'm glad I was able to live this long, way longer than I should have. I got to live a happy life, I guess, and meet you. I guess hell might seem like a nice place to be if you're there. I guess I've been an idiot trying to push myself on you so quickly. I didn't want it to end between us. You're not going anywhere. I want to stay with you, Nadia. I won't let her do anything to you. Nadia's eyes widen as they fill with tears. She tugs at the rope, crying out, but Nadia can only struggle against the restraints. Beep! Time's up! Toko is swept from her feet once more and sent tumbling away. A large black paw throws her to the ground like a rag doll. The giant bunny puppet mass under Devon's command piles on the hapless girl, beating her senseless. Toko can't move, can't fight back, but can merely try to stay conscious by focusing on the cold snow. The feeling that had once been alien to her is now all that keeps her alive. Hold it, hold it! Davy, lift her up, please! On cue, the massive bunnies pulls the limp Toko off the ground, hanging her by her arms. Sheesh, this is so embarrassing. Imagine it's only thanks to Daddy's blood that you're even still alive at the moment. Toko, I'm giving you one last chance. Devon leans in and puts her arms around a disturbed, disoriented Nadia. Toko and Nadia look into each other's eyes, both of them full of fear and regret. Fear for themselves and for the one they care so desperately for. Regret for being unable to save the other. 
N Nadia! Doko? Leaning in like an old friend about to share some gossip, Devin whispers in Nadia's ear, but clearly loud enough for Toko to hear. You know. Oops! You know. <laughs> you know, yeah, you know. You know, Toko's a succubus, like me, but more of a loser, and you know, not as hot. Toko twitches at this remark. It's just like Devin to add insult to injury. Oh, is... is that so? So, did you two do it? What? Toko begins to twitch and blush furiously while Nadia only looks more confused than ever. I know, I know, she's all short and scrawny and not very busty. Oh, come on! But I guess she's sort of a th aesthetically pleasing in a weird modern sort of way, so if you, you know. At this point, she waggles her brow at Nadia, who only frowns more. Wanna hit that? Well, I can hook you up. She has always been so easy to please, and I doubt this would be any different. Shut up! Hmm, is that a no? She drops her arms away from Nadia's shoulder, feigning disappointment, but her mouth twitches every now and then as if she's holding back a smirk. Wow, that's unfortunate. Oh well, since it's not gonna happen, I may as well just, you know, take your soul now! Uh, Her soul- Stop it! Stop! Stay away from Nadia! Something inside Toko reverberates, something sick and tired of being forced to shut up and remain quiet. Hey, Pipsqueak, can you hear me yet? <gasps> Maybe it's- maybe it's my little fam I feel like they all have familiars. Like, full demons have familiars, maybe? Why doesn't my sister have horns? If, like, horns are a sign of, like, a fully grown adult demon, why is my sister missing horns? Ah, whatever. But maybe I'm- maybe I'm hearing my- my familiar. <gasps> Devin lets the now still Nadia collapse to the ground. She licks her lips and turns to her sister. See? She's not going to be depressed anymore if you come down here nice and quietly. You can even play just a little bit before we take her soul. Isn't that what you really wanted? Davy, let her go. Toko falls to the ground in a heap and weakly climbs back to her feet, still a mass of wobbling knees. She sends a daring punch toward one of the wicked puppets. The power of her demonic heritage is still enough to shred parts of the dolls, but the second her blow connects, the rest of the puppet already has Toko by the neck. Her face is slammed into the greasy, gre greasy snow, the grassy snow with one last violent punch. Where am I? Toko lifts her hand to the air, watching the stars in the sky above her winking out one by one as she's swallowed up by the empty blackness around her. She can still see Nadia's soul. Does she hate that soul for what it demands of her? Or does she love it for what it gives her? Maybe it's because she feels she loves it that it's far too much to take that life. To ferry that soul like she was supposed to in all those assignments. She's never truly glimpsed it like this. Feels like she was being led to this place from the very beginning. And that mixture of love and pain that pulsed through her arteries for so long is all erased from her body. So is this what dying feels like? Toko's feelings seem to sink away. Rage, fear, desire. She's not merely dissociating her emotions, they actively separate from her with the twang of a broken string. It isn't a particularly graceful way to go, but something inside her is trying to cling to the unfair gift of her mortality. In the back of her head, she hears a distant, long-forgotten voice. Hello! Pay attention to me! If you die, I die too, and I'd rather not have that happen. Suddenly, she's brought to reality. Wh what? Who are you? Finally! This is my penance for being stuck inside a whiny demon like you. I've been stuck here for years trying to get your attention. You act like you don't even want to save Nadia. Nadia, how could you say that? I've been trying to save her this whole time. No, you've been running around getting your ass kicked and ignoring me. Ignoring you? This is the first time I've ever heard your voice. Liar. I've been talking to you for years, and you decided not to listen to me. Who are you? Seriously? My name is Epiphany. I've been inside you. I am you. Epiphany? That's my name. We should have met sooner, but you were too much of a wuss. I didn't see a reason to get worked up now, though. You want me to save Nadia? Oh, first, don't act all pouty that you're the one that's supposed to save her and all that. You're me, and I'm you, and there's no chance of getting away from each other now. Yes. I was hoping you'd say that. After this, we're gonna have to have a talk. What do I do? Just sing all your sins into me.
A weak demon like Toko, untrained and unpowered, has no hope to fend off a trained and accomplished farrier of hell. But she stands up and prepares to fight on anyway. An electric blue light erupts above Toko's chest. She once more finds her feet, but all the tiredness and frailty seems to melt from her limbs and she's able to stand strong once again. Am I transforming? Is this my henshin? <laughs> oh, it's music notes! Aw, oh, yeah! Epiphany, my sick guitar. Let's rock on. She holds her hands over her chest and pulls on the light slowly, drawing out the shape of an ornate electric blue and gold bass guitar, the likes of which I've n have never been seen on Earth. Now, Toko, show me your licks! Toko listens. She can feel every knob and string, the shape of Epiphany's large humbuckers and scooped mids, not just with her fingers, but with her heart as well. She draws her fingers to the lowest, thickest string and pulls it. Just as Davy reaches for her again, a shockwave rips through the park, blowing the puppet to pieces. An instrument? That's impossible! She's never even ferried a soul! You're wrong, Devin. There is a soul in here. Epiphany! Epiphany? The blue light from the base only intensifies. First, two springy curls, and then a head, and then an entire body bounces into the universe. Is that what you call fingering, Toko? Such an awful attack! I lost the mood almost instantly! A never-before-heard shout booms through the park, sultry and confident. Devin and Toko both look up, and sure enough, with both feet flagrantly standing atop the puppet's heads, they find the source of that voice. For once, Devin looks shocked. It... it manifested itself! Already, it... it's absolutely impossible! Now, Toko, sing into me! Toko takes a deep breath and lets out a large scream of frustration, her body shaking and steaming. Tears run down her cheeks as her body almost gives out. What the hell is this? Damn it, Davy, stop her already! Oh, at once, little miss. The mass of bunnies begin to recompile themselves under Epiphany. The rustling of stuffing and toyish bunny squeaks echoes through the park as it turns to two giant lagomorphic puppets. Damn it, Devin, you never know when to quit! You're always pushing me too far, always manipulating me and trying to make me do whatever you want. Not anymore. Seriously? This isn't supposed to happen. You never took a soul. How can you possibly awaken? Don't play dumb. Hurry up and try to touch me. You won't even lay a finger on me. Did you forget that I still have Nadia in my... Before Devin can finish her boasting, Epiphany slips between the puppets and blasts them away with a forceful punch. Devin quickly brings them under control, but Toko is now freed from the danger of death. Do you have some fight left in you, Toko? Yeah, I can take Devin. Good! Hurry up and knock her out! I'll only be able to hold this thing off! Seriously? You aren't a match for them? Well, it's not my fault that someone refused to feed me properly. I'm fighting on an empty stomach! Fine, let's go. Epiphany may only have just enough energy to stick around. Toko is on borrowed time. Only the hopes of rescuing Nadia keep the two of them going. Epiphany runs to the mass of enraged puppets, preparing to do as much damage as possible to it before the rest of it catches up to her. She cracks her fingers with a deep snap and tosses a punch into the mass of bunnies. This time, she lacks the energy to push it back, but right now, if she can dent the number of dolls, she'll be satisfied. Without looking behind her, she sends a kick to the puppet mass that had formed without a with the boop. Without looking behind her, she sends a kick into the puppet mass that had formed around from behind, sending it crashing into the ground in a cloud of dirt and snow. Won't be long before the pile of bunnies can reconstitute itself. She does her best to conserve her power and braces for the onslaught she knows is coming. She knows she'll need Toko's help to destroy them completely anyway. A splinter, tar and feather, strangulate! Give me your best groove! I can ride with you as long as you can keep up the rhythm! The puppets comply and blast into the waiting Epiphany. She does her best to rebound out of the way of the attacks, to block in time of their beats, to at the very least not get punched in the face. But the marionettes are too powerful and too well coordinated, their syncopation too unpredictable. Epiphany takes the beating willingly, turning to her player. Toko, Devin is the one controlling these puppets! You have to take her out! Gladly! 
A burst of energy courses through Toko, victory in her sights as long as she keeps focus, for Nadia's sake. Devin is still by the jungle gym, her eyes wide with shock at what just happened, but snapping into oops, but snapping into focus as Toko draws near. Suddenly, the tiny little doll appears before her. It's much more polite of you to simply stop and give up. It would also be easier on your body as well. Please understand, I have the utmost concern for you and wish you to die as peacefully as possible. Toko takes an angry swing at Davy, but he's small and her attacks are easily avoided. I'm... A kick to the stomach. Not... A grab by the ears. Gonna... Davy kicks and punches at Toko, but she holds him at arm's length. Die! Toko tugs hard on the ears, watching Davy's seams burst. Yet! With one final cry, the demon pulls hard and rips the stuffed rabbit in two. She tosses the pieces to the ground, the snow melting into the exposed stuffing. Instantly, the puppets start to crumble and fall apart. Epiphany, who had been fighting them this whole time, heaves with exhaustion as stuffed bunnies rain from the air and fall lifelessly to the ground. You guys are fucking lame! You're a pathetic excuse for a demon with a shitty instrument! You two shouldn't be able to- Ugh! Devin pulls out two more bunnies from behind her, swinging them about her like flails. Toko, let me take the hit! You finish Devin off! Got it. Toko bounds upwards, hoping to avoid Devin's attack while Epiphany sprints across the ground. Don't you think you can sh Don't- Don't think you can just shout your plans like I'm not here! Devin faints and swings the puppets upward, hoping to slam Toko between them, but the two are stopped before they connect. Wait! What happened? Ha! Huh, I thought you'd do that! The invisible strings that connect Devin to her puppet mass are firmly within Epiphany's grip. With a grin, she plucks the bundle of strings, sending deep, punchy vibrations through them. It spins along the strings until it finally reaches the puppets, and within an instant their threads unravel, tearing the bunnies apart piece by piece. Impossible! No one can see my snares! Devin chatters uncontrollably as she tries to grab a hold of her head to keep it from vibrating, letting go of those strings as her whole body shakes violently. Oh, you didn't think that we were so low class as to not see how you controlled those puppets, did you? Night, night. Toko takes one last string swing of the base and clobbers Devin over the head, sending her to the ground in an unconscious heap. Hm. What a lousy excuse for a demon. But she's my demon! Where's Nadia? Toko runs from the clobbered Devon to the unconscious Nadia, still hanging from the ropes. Oh, she's still alive! Hey, we just won! A little gratitude here would be appreciated. Aren't you gonna celebrate with a crappy one-liner? But I did! I said night-night! Epiphany only smiles, but at the moment, Toko is just glad that Nadia's okay. It's only when the fight is over that she realizes the tears pouring down her cheeks. Her face red, bruised, and happy. Toko puts her arms around Nadia's body and hugs her close. She notices how cold it's been since leaving the apartment. Epiphany, thank you for helping me. I guess... I don't know. I'm sorry for ignoring you this long. About time, sheesh. Epiphany's body almost immediately dissipates. A demon tail sprouts from the base in Toko's hand and attaches itself like a strap, wide and flat. Okay, I need some rest now, so you better not forget about me again when I wake up. Thanks, Epiphany. Just get some rest. You've earned it. Toko can only smile to herself, even though it hurts her face, as she puts the strap over her shoulder and hangs Epiphany across her chest. She positions her back to Nadia and pulls her legs by her side, carefully trying to hoist Nadia over her back. Guess I got a little stronger tonight. Here goes. <sighs> Back in the apartment, Toko finishes laying Nadia on the bed and pulls the covers over her body. She'd been exposed to the cold for over an hour with not very much in the way of clothing. It's at the very least weird for Toko to now be so worried about a human. Cat's out of the bag, so human saying- oh. Cat's out of the bag, so the human saying goes. Surdy admitted she cares for her. Then again, she isn't much of a demon herself anymore. Uh, Toko? Oh, Nadia, don't try to get up. You're fine. You're inside now, so. Wait, I, I had an awful dream, and I'm really not sure what happened. I woke up in the middle of the park. You got captured by my sister, and she tried to make me take your soul. Oh, so then I wasn't dreaming. Then I didn't dream you confessing to me. Toko's bruised red face becomes even redder as she looks away. She's looking at Epiphany, who's resting against the bookcase, and something tells her she's sleeping peacefully now. Uh, well, I guess that really wasn't a dream, no. I don't remember how it went or what you said then. 
You remember just fine. It's how you said it happened. Toko, I want to hear you say it again. Fine. Uh, is it okay if I stay here for a bit? <laughs> you big dummy. Nadia leans up and hooks her arm over Toko's shoulders, pulling Toko on top of her. Leaning up, she brushes Toko's hair aside and gently kisses her on the forehead. Uh, is that a yes? Or... Yeah, guess we'll have to find a spot to set up Epiphany. Wait, you know about Epiphany? <laughs> Jeez, I wasn't just being a fainting idiot the whole time we were out there. Oh, sorry. What about my soul? Well, there's no way to separate it now. Me and Epiphany, you and me, the only way to do it is if our soul is taken to limbo. I don't want everyone in hell chasing after me. You could be happy having a normal life. Now I have to worry about you two. You're gonna get weaker and weaker while everyone tries to claim my soul from you, and then what's gonna happen? And if someone stronger than Devin beats you, I don't get to have a single say. I'm stuck watching my own fate play out in front of me. <sighs> Nadia, I'm sorry. This could have been avoided if I left you alone. I didn't... Toko. The bass hums softly, and the same confident air of Epiphany's voice rings out with a distant reverb. You been listening to us? Well, it's kind of hard not to. You think really loud. There's no way to separate Nadia's soul without killing Nadia. No, without killing all of us. Uh, so what are you saying? I think she's saying because of what happened, my soul has become inseparable from yours, so... I guess we're sharing the same soul now? Toko, if you don't want to take her soul to limbo, and you don't want anyone else to take her soul to limbo, then the only choice is to fight back! You make it sound like that would be easy. Well, it's easier on my tuners. I'd choose that over hearing you two bitching and moping about how sucky everything is. Still feel like I'm being a pawn toyed with by hell. Well, you two don't like the idea of Nadia's soul being taken. However, her soul is inside you now, Toko. So to make this 100% clear, if any of us end up dying, then we're all gonna die. So, <laughs> struggled all those years to possess a body of my own, and now that I got one, I won't spend forever floating in limbo waiting to be judged. So there's only one solution. Kick everybody's asses until they do what you want. And there's a happy resolution. So now you two can have sex or whatever and make up. Whoa, hey, whoa, 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 hey. I'm gonna have a nap, so whatever, do, I don't know, do whatever. It's still not gonna be that easy. I guess I really never had a complicated life until now. For some reason, it feels better than waiting around for someone to show up and kidnap me. Good, then I'm going back to sleep. Feel free to play me anytime, Toko. Don't leave me in a closet getting covered in dust or something. I spent, like, so much time being ignored. I'm exhausted, too. Nadia clings to Toko's back tighter and pulls the demon on top of her. Toko is still very unused to this human affection. Nadia turns off the light and pulls Toko under the covers, and the two lie there for minutes on end before their whispers break the silence. Why a bass guitar? I don't even know how to play one. You should learn. I want you to serenade me. Nadia, I'm really sorry for being such a jerk, but I'm gonna make it up to you, I promise. Shh. Just sleep. We'll feel better in the morning. Good night, Toko. Night, Nadia. So, you're a succubus, huh? Night, Nadia! <laughs> Duh. Cuties. Cuties!